Hello, welcome to this video on how to locate popular sources. This video was created in July of 2019, specifically for our graduate students in education and counseling. So that is who I will tend to focus on, but really anybody can watch this video. My name is Paula Cardozo. I am the subject liaison librarian for the Faculty of Education and for Sociology and Women and Gender Studies here at the University of Lethbridge Library. So before we go in and start looking for those popular sources, if you need a refresher on what they actually are, we're at the library homepage. Let's click on Guides. I'm going to go to the first column. We're going to pick Evaluate Sources. And let's go to Evaluating Articles. We have some really good information here on how to tell the difference between something peer-reviewed and something that's written for maybe a more popular audience. And if we just scroll down here, we have a table that goes through the differences between a scholarly journal, a trade journal, which is something that we could use in education and counseling, and then something uh, that's popular that's written for an even more general audience. So if you need a refresher on that, feel free to visit this page. Otherwise, let's get right back into the guides. So I'm going to go into the Research in Education LibGuide. For my counseling folk, this uh, isn't all that different depending on which one you go into. So hopefully you'll still be able to get lots out of this. So I'll click on Research in Education. Just remember, if you need any help with anything at all, let me know. Email is always the best way to find me. If I'm in the system, this chat box goes directly to me and you'll know that it's active when it's lit up green. But of course, if you can't find me, there is the main uh, research desk on the main floor of the library and feel free. You can see there's many different ways to get a hold of someone here and our hours do tend to change. So if you're wondering when that desk, desk is staffed, just click on this library hours right here. So let's just scroll up and go to articles. So in addition to having the peer reviewed articles that I want you looking at, uh, these databases can also carry some newspapers, magazines and trade publications. So the one we're going to go into is CBCA. That's one that tends to have quite a bit of general coverage. If you're ever wondering what is in these databases, just hover your cursor right over the eye and it will give you a bit of a snapshot. This one is really good if you're looking for uh, Canadian content. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this one. Depending on where you were, you might have to sign in just your Moodle bridge login and password. If you've been in some other classes with me, you know that I tend to go right up here to that change databases and depending on the search that I'm doing, I might add a few more things. So let's click on that. So we're going to keep Canadian uh, Business and Current Affairs database, but we're also going to add Education Database. ERIC, which is another big education related one, it also has some great counseling content in there as well. Depending on the search you're doing, you might want to add a few more of these. And if I was looking for some newspaper coverage in Canada from the Globe and Mail in this time range, I could add this one too. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And when you've picked the ones that you want, just click on Use Selected Databases. And now we've just cast a bit of a wider net. You do have the option of going here and picking your source type. So if I know that I want newspapers and magazines, I'm going to click on that. I'm also going to scroll down and they're calling it trade journals here. So let's pick there. And now we can run our search. So I'm interested in class size in Alberta and I'm not going to type that in. So remember that when we're doing library searching, we take our separate concepts and we put the word N between them. And anytime we're dealing with a geographic location, that's what we write. We wouldn't put Albertan or Canadian. So always go with, say, in the case of a country, the nation, not the nationality. But you can play with this. And now let's run our search. So this brought back 250 results for me. 
I don't ever want you clicking on the full text limiter here because just because we don't have full text in this particular database doesn't mean we don't have it somewhere else. So please don't cut yourself off from valid results. Let's just scroll down here. We have the option of either zeroing in on a really particular type of publication. We can also go in after the publication date. So let's say that I've now decided I really want to focus on newspaper coverage of a particular topic. I can zero it down. And as I take a quick scroll, um, it defaults to a relevancy display. Uh, maybe I'm not interested in things from 2001, and one thing I'm noticing is I'm, I'm not getting a lot of contemporary coverage on this. Now, I could click on last 12 months and hope for the best, but that didn't happen. So there just isn't anything in this particular search, so that's okay. We're going to change gears and we're going to go somewhere else. But Since I liked that keyword search, I'm going to steal it, and we're just going to use it somewhere else. So let's go back to the library homepage, and we're going to do a summon search. So summon is that great big all-you-can-eat buffet that's searching lots and lots of different resources in the library. Since I like that search, I'm just going to paste it in. But the thing with summon is it's talking to databases that are covering all the disciplines and it's bringing in lots and lots of content type so it's up to us to really make sure that the system knows exactly what we want so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to content type and I'm going to click on more and I'm once again going to pick newspapers magazines and they're calling it trade publication articles then we just go up here and click apply because we got 132,000 results the first time we searched. So that's um, getting a little bit better and I can take a look and I can either specify a publication range um, here by clicking or pick a really um, specific one that can go right down to the day but I'm just going to click on 12 months. And then we can start taking a look at some of the results that came up. So that is one way of searching for newspaper articles. I'm going to show you another way. So let's go back home again. We're going to go back to guides. And this time we're going to go in the third column and we're going to go to our newspapers libguide. So depending on what it is you're searching for, you may wish to zero right in on some local content or make a choice between historical newspapers or contemporary. So let's pick contemporary for now. Searching effectively is more than just plugging in the right keywords. A lot of time it's just making a plan. Okay, this is what I want. This is the best place to go searching for it. So always take a quick look at some of the descriptions and you can get a sense of some of the uh, papers that are included in some of these databases. The databases can be different, but most of the time the searching strategies that I just showed to you are going to be somewhat the same, so you have that option. But let's say you are focusing on one particular newspaper, so I'm just going to grab Globe and Mail. You do have yet another option, so let's go back home. This time we're going to click on Find Articles and we're going to go to the Journal Title Search. So anytime you're trying to hunt down a really particular um, article that's in a periodical or what we call a serial, so that could be a scholarly journal, a newspaper, or a magazine, what we do is we go into this tool and we put in the name of the serial. So we're going to go Globe and Mail and we'll do a search. And what this tool does is it tells us all the different ways, like whether or not we actually have a subscription to this particular resource, and then how we have it. And that can be a number of different electronic databases, or even paper and microfilm. 
dates, you can see that we're going back pretty far from there. So your next job is to think about what it is you're researching and try to pick a date range and then go into the most relevant one. So if I'm doing things on Alberta class size in the last 12 months, I'm not going to go into this one because the coverage is cutting off in 2014. But I could go into Canadian News Stream instead. And again, once you get in there, you'll do a similar search to what we did. Now, let's say that you do a search or there's a particular article that you want and you've checked with us and we don't have access to it, that's okay. Please don't ever pay for anything. Uh, that can sometimes happen when you go out to the newspaper's general websites. Try to for an interlibrary loan instead and when you're in the databases, it will often prompt you, but if it does not, you can go back to the library homepage, click on services, go to request interlibrary loan and once you've signed in and done that put in as much of the bibliographic data as you can title author date the newspaper that it's in all of that good stuff and uh, the interlibrary loan staff will do their best to get that one to you so that's all for now please remember if you have any questions please ask us um, thanks for watching and happy researching